Hi again, it is part two of the Junicorn series. Uh, the first video I did had the first set of four illustrations for, for Junicorn, and this is the second set of four illustrations I did for Junicorn. Um, if you didn't watch the previous video, I did my Junicorn prompts this month, or last month I guess now, uh, by getting my Patreon to give me all uh, a three emoji set for um, for different prompts. So they, they suggested as many as they could think of, and then I kind of picked and chose which ones I wanted to use. Um, so this first one I'm working on was a Saturn, a storm cloud, and a little crown. And I decided when I started, I kind of wanted to make like a little short stumpy unicorn because all the other unicorns I'd made were still fairly tall. Uh, and I actually was live streaming while I worked on this. Uh, well, I live streamed for all of them actually while I worked on them, but for this one, I was getting some help from the stream to see what designs looked good. And we all agreed that we liked the uh, the Saturn rings around the neck of the little unicorn. And I kind of decided to have the crown be less of a, a literal one and more of a uh, sort of a, a vibe or a feeling. So I wanted to make him look very regal, like he was standing very tall and important. Uh, and then as you can see, I included the storm cloud with his mane and tail, as well as the little um, horn <laughs> shaped like a lightning bolt. So I went through and I got them all sketched out. I didn't have him do any interesting poses. I decided to do this one kind of simple since um, I just wasn't feeling excitingly <laughs> posable that day, I guess. Uh, and then I went through and I got this little guy inked and I really enjoyed making the big curly, uh, curly cute cloud mane. I thought that was really cute and it was very, very fun to draw. Uh, and aside from that, he's fairly simple. You'll see here in a second, I went to put a line, but I was paying attention to the chat instead of to what I was doing. So I made his butt line weird, um, but I cover that up later with some paint. As per usual, I'm painting mostly with my beam paints, but I also used some of my uh, Koi set to kind of add a black to it and things like that. And I went in with a um, like a, a base wash of this sort of blue-gray, because I wanted all of him to have this blue-gray color to him. Uh, I ended up leaving his body just this nice like pastel color, and then I went in and, and did the uh, mane and tail with more vibrant dark colors but uh, I wasn't really sure what the end colors were going to be, so I thought if I put this everywhere, we'll have a nice blue tone to the whole piece and I can kind of go from there. Um, so I put that wash down, let that dry, and then I got started on the main. And for this, I used mostly black paint from that Koi watercolor set. And my Koi set is very, it can be very chalky. It's not a very good set. I mean, it's, it's fine to learn on and some of the paints are just great on their own, uh, but a lot of the really dark toned ones, the black, the, there's like a dark, dark blue, and a few other ones just get really chalky really fast. And I found that was happening with this black wash. I was ending up with this like grainy, chalky look that I wasn't a huge fan of, but I had an idea to fix it, so I figured I would let that dry down. And I also found sort of the, the noise that it added, at least it kind of looked almost like, um, not like a static, but like, like if you were to look at something kind of f fuzzy. So I thought, well, not my favorite effect, but it's fine, it'll work. Uh, and then I went and I gave his little feet, um, like little dark tips to the hooves, and then washed them up into the rest of the body. You can see here as I, uh, I have like a rag that I usually use to dry off my paintbrush, but if I'm doing stuff small and quick, I'll just wipe it off on my hand and keep going. Uh, so then I mixed up a really nice saturated dark blue with that beam set because I knew my beam paints would be uh, like good saturation and not grainy or chalky and I did a wash over top and I thought this added a whole lot of like depth to the to the cloud mane and tail. I really really liked the effect after that was all painted down and dried. I thought it looked great. And the last set of details for this guy was adding in his gold uh, 
unicorn and a few other little gold touches because uh, I thought the gold as well from the crown. So he's very stately and regal and he's got the gold crown and sort of that golden color from Saturn. Uh, I thought they all kind of worked together. And because Saturn was one of the prompts, I used my interstellar set from Jasmine Fay because uh, it's, a, it's a planet set. It's from space and this is a space accord. So I had to do it. And yeah, I added in those little like Saturn's rings in around his neck. I thought that looked really cute. Sort of like he had a little um, like collar or a, or jewelry on, making him look even more regal. And I also added it in uh, a few touches in his fur, and then down to the hooves. I made it look like he had little gold hooves. The second unicorn in this set was a very strange one, and you don't actually get to see the whole process on this one because I believe my my phone, which I use as my camera, ran out of space, so I had to just sort of finish it because I was still streaming. Um, but this one, the prompts were a shark, a rainbow, and a star. So I thought about making it more like a um, oh, what are they called? A hippogriff? Are those what I'm thinking of? Um, those like water horses. Anyways, I was trying to make it look like like a like a mermaid unicorn, uh, and then it ended up being very shark-like <laughs> and uh, a lot less horse-like. But I'm okay with that. I still gave it the one horn, so it could be uh, a unicorn. And the front legs are a little like horsey hooves. Um, and yeah, this one was just this one was the strangest one, and I think it's because I tried so hard to keep all the prompts in instead of keeping like a instead of taking inspiration from each prompt. I don't know, I, I really wanted all of the specific prompts to be in. The only one that's not really obvious is the star one, but when you see the final illustration at the end, um, where I make the horn radiant, like look shiny and radiant, that's where the star prompt came in. I wanted the horn to look like it was shiny because I wanted this to be like some sort of deep sea creature. That's why I gave it the big, um, the big clear eyeballs like a barrel eye fish. <laughs> I also thought that might make it look a little creepier. I was kind of, I was kind of digging the creepy, weird vibe on this one. Uh, and other than that, it's a fairly simple design. It's just basically a shark with front legs. <laughs> um, I also cleaned up some of the line work too, uh, made things a little like tighter when I went in later and finished it off by adding a black background to it. Um, but for now, you'll only see me adding the colors. And the rainbow uh, prompt, I literally just painted him a rainbow. I could have been a little more clever with it, but I didn't want to be. <laughs> So I worked pretty quickly trying to get this like rainbow want down. I wanted the colors to kind of melt together. As a result, uh, in my speed, I didn't quite make the colors follow um, like the shape of the body the way I would like to. But again, who cares? It's fine. <laughs> uh, and yeah, I went in and I added some coloration to the feet. Uh, I just thought this like rainbow effect was kind of neat. And later on too, you don't see it now, but I add in some stripes on top too to kind of like make... Uh, everything look a little more cohesive. And then the horn, because later on I make it radiant and very bright, I went in with this radioactive green um, colored paint that I got from uh, KMH Paints on Etsy. It is, like this is it on top of a blue when you put it down just straight, it's so bright. <laughs> it's very radioactive. Uh, and the third unicorn I worked on as you can see, I had to stop with the shark one because my camera's space ran out. Uh, the third unicorn I did was one that was... What were the prompts? Oh yes, it was a an angry face, a hibiscus flower, and a crescent moon. Uh, and this one I kind of wanted to make it a little more like traditional, elegant unicorn. 
uh, and use the hibiscus just mostly for like a color inspiration because I just like the pink and then I was like I'll make it grumpy <laughs> and then I gave it that big like curled back horn to kind of mimic the crescent moon shape uh, I ended up looking up some references and found some uh, nice pictures of like horses kicking so I decided to go with one of those poses where it's like kicking backwards to make it look um, angry <laughs> like a horse would when they were they were pissed off So it took, <laughs> you can see me hand talking to the camera. Um, if you didn't know, I stream on Twitch. Um, you can just find me at twitch.tv slash Um I've been streaming, doing these painting processes, working on digital uh, stuff for my Patreon, like stickers or um, doing my digital doodle requests for the Patreons at that tier. And um, it's been actually quite fun. I've, I've been enjoying it. It's been a nice way to like draw and interact with people. Um, where I live alone in the woods. <laughs> um, but this one, the pose, uh, it took me a while to get that head right. I cut out um, like 40 attempts at making the head look correct. <laughs> and this is what I ended up settling on. And I think, I think this one worked out well. Um, I, I, liked the, I liked the final result for the pose. I thought it looked very elegant and grumpy, which I was kind of going for. And uh, yeah, I thought it turned out really cute. I really enjoyed like doing the mane all flowy and curly and doing this um, it's my favorite style of unicorn like tail the the lion's tail because the original unicorns are not just a horse with a horn they're like a combination of like a goat and a lion and a whatever like they're they're a bunch of different animals kind of mashed together they just look like a horse at a distance so people confuse them for horses so I always love it when they have that lion tail instead of the more traditional horse tail or not traditional, I guess more modern horse tail. <laughs> uh, and then I went in and once again, I did a nice big flat wash on the entire thing in this nice pastel pink. Um, again, partially because I wanted the body to be this nice pastel and also because no matter what colors I put down on top of it, I wanted to have this pink um, hue to it just so that everything looks cohesive. And it was a very nice pink. I, I like a bubblegum pastel pink. I'm not usually a pink fan. Uh, not that I dislike pink, it's just like not my favorite color to pick for things. I like purples and blues the most. Um, but this pink was really satisfying, and I will probably paint a lot of pink things <laughs> in the future. <laughs> it's just such a nice color. Uh, and then once all that was dried down, I added in some markings, uh, so I gave her face like a little mask. I went in and did another layer on the mane and tail to give them like another darker hue and the shadows and then I came back in with this nice bright yellow because uh, I was thinking of the yellow stamens on the um, hibiscus and I wanted to put that as the horn so I thought that would look really nice this like bright yellow horn coming off of this pink uh, unicorn and because I put that pink down underneath it kind of gave that yellow a bit of a, a pink shift um, if that makes sense <laughs> I also went in and added in a dark pink gradient to the main, um, again trying to replicate sort of the hibiscus flowers where they have uh, a gradient in the petals and there's this like really rich magenta pink color as well as that soft color. Um, and I usually do gradients in this fashion where I sort of go in and I drop a bunch of color and then I um, clean up my brush a bit and then I go in and I kind of move it along. There's a lot of different ways to kind of do gradients um, depending on how much space you have or like how vibrant you want the gradient to be or how soft you want it to be. So I like to kind of, I like to make it a very soft gradient and then go down to like a really saturated point. Um, I don't know why, I just do. So instead of going in and like very slowly bringing the color out, I like to drop the color, clean my brush, and then sort of just um, with a wet, barely colored, uh, barely colored, what's the word I'm looking for? With a wet brush that has barely any color on it. There you go. I like to go in and kind of move that edge back and keep cleaning the brush and move it back. And then as soon as I get to the point where it's like, I've got no more color on my brush, I go back in and I kind of like soften it up and, and move it around a little bit more just to make it kind of, kind of a nice gentle gradient. But not one that takes the entire space to get rid of. I hope that made sense. <laughs> the final unicorn, the prompts were a ninja, a T-Rex, 
and a comet. <laughs> um, it took me a little bit of time to figure out what I wanted to do with this one. Because I was like, I don't want really want to make a, a sneaky ninja unicorn. I mean, I could, if given enough time, I may have just created some sort of like unicorn that hunts. So it like hides in the brush and it, it's sneaky like that. But uh, I went more so with the uh, picking like the colors from the ninja one. So I made, uh, I decided to do this like bones uh, with the comet so that it would kind of look like it was burning off. And the inspiration actually for that was from Sim K. They have an illustration where they have a dragon and a unicorn fighting. I'm literally holding it in my hands right now. It's gorgeous. Um, but the dragon has just blasted the unicorn with fire and uh, they illustrated the unicorn to be kind of like transparent so you can see the bones all charring underneath. Um, mine, I didn't want it to be dead. I just wanted it to look spooky. So I decided to do the skeletal structure and paint them all black uh, and then do this blue comet fire around it. So it was like a magical spooky ghost unicorn thing. Um, as you can see here, I went in and I only lined the bones first. So just did an outline for them and then kind of here where the uh, where the bones sort of overlapped and I might get confused, I added a little bit of hatching for later reference. And then I went in and I put my blue comet fire down. And once that was all done, that's when I went in and actually filled in the bones just so that I wouldn't um, have to wait for ink to dry or accidentally bleed the black into the blue or have it all fade when I tried to clean it up. And yeah, I just thought this was a better idea, makes things simpler. I think it worked pretty well. If you can hear clickety clacks in the background, that's my dog's little feet. She needs her nails cut. <laughs> um, yeah, so I went in, I just did a couple shades of blue and I think I even went in with like a white, really watered down gouache and like dropped it in a few spots just to kind of give it some, some fiery ethereal um, colors and like, like the, uh, like there was depth to it, not just like a flat color. And I also did the edges in this like rough kind of dithered effect. Dithered, is that the word? Hmm. I'm saying things, I don't know if I'm right. In any case, I, I did a textured effect around the edge to kind of make it look a little bit more fiery and ghosty and magical instead of um, just like a solid shape. So once all that paint was dry, I was able to go back in and I just took a, uh, it's a micron like graphics, graphic? You can see it in my hand. It's a graphic brush. <laughs> um, it's a micron like brush tipped uh, pen and um, I knew it was like full of ink. I knew I could control it really well, nice and fast. And I went in and I filled in all of those bones to make them look, well, black and spooky and scary. <laughs> um, so at the end of the video, you'll see what next month's Patreon rewards are, which uh, for August will be based off of our Junicorn prompts. So there'll be a hand embellished print and a couple stickers. So if you want to join, you can get those. There's also a digital doodle tier, um, which is below that. So you don't have to pay as much to get the physical rewards. But if you come to one of the streams where I'm working digitally, I will doodle your pet, your favorite animal, your favorite Pokemon, a dinosaur, a duck eating a walrus, I don't know, whatever you want. It's a digital doodle thing. It will be nice quick and you'll have access to the ping afterwards. So it, I, I don't know, I think it's worth it. <laughs> uh, in any case, I'd love to thank you for coming and watching my video and I hope that you enjoyed this uh, as well as my other Junicorn video and I hope you stick around for more. I'd also like to take a moment to thank all of my wonderful patrons who make this possible. Uh, Emily Cannon, Mary Chase, Nicole Goodnight, Justin Thulu, Atticus Jackson, So Spice, Audrey McAvoy, Olivia White, Sarah Flanagan, Philippa Riggs, Tasha Redfox, Friday Norvell, Rory, Jesse's Grill, and Andrew Wilson. 
you guys are the best. And if you want to join my Patreon and get your name read out at the end of the videos, uh, see my behind the scenes work on stuff, uh, see works in progress, see these videos early, get digital doodles, uh, prints and stickers, a bunch of crap, uh, you can go to patreon.com slash or check the link in my description below. Thank you so much.